Hello everyone, in today's video we're gonna dive into security filters in security filter chain. Same way as we discover sublet filter and security filter chain. Here's we like to know what the default setting gonna give us in terms of security filters and what we need to configure to enable to use it, what's already there for us without doing anything, and how they are ordered. And as always, we're going to register a custom one and buy it into our security filter chain. Okay, let's go ahead to our service. If you're new in this series, you can simply start with start.string.io. Here we only need three dependencies, string web, string security, and lumbox. And that's pretty much it, because we only inspect what we are going to have by default with spring security. I will reuse the report in the last video, so we're going to roll back what we did in the last video. Here I'm going to comment out our custom security filter chains. Then anything back to the default right? Because even we still have one security filter chain being here, but it's actually the default one that auto configured for us. Here, from the Spring Boot web security configuration. So this is the default one auto configured for us. Then we just copy it, right? And we will override. So we create our custom bin, we will override the default one, but actually the same configuration. Okay, so this is the same default configuration that Spring provides us, right? Okay, let's run the service to see what we're going to have with the default setting. But uh, okay, don't forget to put our breakpoint as filter chain proxy do filter. Okay, filter chain proxy. So we're going to find do filter. Okay, here. So let's put our breakpoint here. Then restart. Okay, let's send a herald request. Okay, try to send send it. Okay, let's follow the line here in the filter chain proceed. So we go to do filter internal. And here so we go want to go to this method, get filters. Remember in the last video, right? Okay, let's put the record point here. And in here we can see our security filter chain. Okay, this is a place where only one and only one security filter chain will be chosen in the last video. And since we only have one security filter chain and it's for any request, it's going to match any request. So obviously this one will be chosen for process our request rate. Right? So we are going to have 16 string filters in this chain. So by default, without doing anything, we are going to have one security filter chain with 16 security filters in it. So you see disable and cut URL filters, security contact holder, header writer, username password authenticate, basic authenticate filters, exception translation filters, authorization filters. I put them into our diagram here. So with only few lines of code here, around three configuration lines, we had 16 security filters. So obviously, some of them are always there with the configuring to provide us some protections that maybe we're not aware of them when securing our service, like header writer filters going to give us new secure HTTP headers, the two cards, CFRS, blah, blah. Okay, let's see what we're going to have if we right away return the HTTP view uh, without anything. Okay, so then let's come on out these configurations. Then we right away return the HTTP view and restart application. And then run. Okay, okay, as usual, we have only have one security filter chance, and which is the default one. And now we are going to have. 11 filters even though we didn't explicitly configure them so these are the blue boxes that I draw there in the diagram so we are going to have disable and cut URL filters web async manager integration filters security context holder filters blah 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 and the, the last one is exception translation filters they are 11 security filters and all of them except web async can be explicitly configured with HTTP security objects. So for example, the disable and cut URL filters 
is from section management and security contact holder filters from security context header writer filters is from headers so basically this configuration is similar to this but now we going to explicitly other thing so we have section management security context header calls CSRF logout request catch subnet ABI anonymous exception handling and view here's all the blue boxes okay remember we have 11 by default right and now we explicitly declare them let's rerun then going to send request here now filter change is still the same 11 security filters and by adding authorized HTTP request we're going to have an authorization filter with form login we're going to have username password authentication filters default login page generating filters default lockout page generating filters and with HTTP basic we're going to add to the chain the basic authentication filter okay let's add them back to our security filter chain to return the default configuration of the default security filter chain that spring security auto configuration give us here so authorized request authorized request form locking form locking HTTP basic so this is the same with this one we just explicitly declare all the default one to make it clear why we have 16 security filters right remember let's run again send a request then we have back to the default without doing anything 16 security filters 16 security filters okay so we know by configuring HTTP security object we can add or remove security filter in the security filter chest now the question turn into how do we arrange these filters because we know the order is extremely important in filter context right in the first video we defined the order of sublet filters in the second video we defined the order of security filter chain so where do we define the order of these security filters in this video so basically they are spring filters not our custom filters so they have the order predefined by spring more specifically in the filter order registration class okay so now let's go to filter order registration class then so this class contains a map that stores the filter name and the corresponding order of that filter. Start at 100 and each step is 100. So follow the constructor here, you're going to see you know, the disable and cut URI filters is going to the first one. The order would be 100. The fork eager section reaction filters, the order should be 200 and go on I already draw it to our diagram as well so we see it. we have the order registration here this is the map right then this is 100 200 300 500 right sometimes we have like the order doc next with down aside to you know like 100 200 300 but this one without assigned to any filter so that's why sometimes we have a missing a gap here and the order in this map is going to be assigned to the filters so by whatever configuration this order will be mapped to this map to get the real order of this order in the security filter chain so for example the username password authentication filters uh, will be mapped to this map to get this order is 1900 1900 this basic authentication filter is going to get the order 2600 and the authorization filter is going to get the order of this map is 
3600. So, each one had its own order to work harmoniously together with each other, so we don't have to care about manually assigning the order. And the root is as same as service filter and security filter chains, the lowest order, the highest priority. Okay, so I think we can move to our not practical exercise as usual today. We're going to create and register our custom security filter to this default security filter chain. Let's follow the Spring Security official documentation and take our ABI key filters in the last video as an example. So add a custom filter to a filter chain. So in order to create a filter that can be assigned to a filter chain, uh, we can implement a filter interface do filter method or once per request filter interface do filter internal method. In our ABI key filter, we follow the later yes, then one per request filter and implement the do filter internal. A quick review in this filter, so we are going to check the ABI key here and the user have to provide the exact ABI key here in the request header it's API key. Then we will leave the rest for later discussions. And in order to register it to the chain, we can add filters before or after a specific chain in the HTTP security objects. So if we want to put our filters on top of username, password, uh, let's take a look here. So on top of username, password authentication filters, we can add a filter before this filter. Let's go to applications and we now add our filters, ABI key filters, add filter before username password authentication filter. So we can put the red point at HTTP security. So HTTP security uh, perform view. So we're looking for perform view. Okay, then we can put a red point here. It's better if we put it after we shot it. Okay, so this one. Then let's restart. So, filtered, so filtered. Okay, so this filtered. So here we can see after filters. So we get our 16 plus one, 16 plus one is 17, right? And our ABI key is here right away in front of username and password authentication filters. So we know username and password authentication filter is 1900 and our ABI keys is right away in front of it, 1899. So username and password authentication filter 1900 and our ABI key custom filter will on top of it. Remember that the order will be taken from here not from the current filters in the chain. So let's say, for example, we don't want to have that username password authentication filters in our chain. So we still can use the add filter before with this username password authentication filter. So let's disable it by disable uh, form locking. So by, by disable form locking, this we're not going to have the username password authentication filter in our chain anymore but we can still use it to determine the order of our API key then let's print it and again we have filtered so our filters is the same 1899 even though we don't have a username password authentication filter. And with that current setting, we can authenticate uh, your user by either ABI key or basic authentication. So let's disable all the breakpoints we have and then try to send some requests. So this time without any, so hello. So we're going to get for want an authorized, then let's go to use ABI key and where to find a key so it rips. so we bring the keys here so this is our ABI key right scene we mm -hmm. sorry 
so I only have HTTP basic and API key so two logging mechanism for this case okay and now we have the API key so let's see we're going to have the header is API key right mm -hmm. send and now we see hello world same if we can use a uh, basic authenticate let's find the password yeah hello world okay that's pretty much it for this video I highly recommend you take a look at Spring Security official documentation for more in details. So we will end this video here. Thank you so much for taking your time watching this video and this series. Hope you can learn something new here and see you in the next video. Happy coding!